Ah! Greetings, brethren, Cloaking Donkey here, bringing you yet another part of my series of beginner's guides for classic Dark Age of Camelot, this time the 1 to 20 leveling guide for Midgard. If you're looking for the stats guides or my leveling guides for the other two factions, you can find links to them in the card box up in the top right corner. Now the best way of leveling by yourself in Dark Age of Camelot from level 1 to 20 is kill tasking. Kill tasking are kind of like quests, but not really. You go to a named guard and type slash whisper task, or you can also make a macro for this by typing slash macro space task space slash whisper space task. Then you hit enter and you will get a button that you can put on your hotbar. This is certainly time saving and since you're going to be doing a lot of tasks from level 1 to 20, you might want to do this as it's just going to save you a lot of typing. Anyway, when you do this, the guard will tell you to go and kill a specific monster. He will give you a monster name and you have to kill that specific monster. Whatever monster they give you currently at the time of you taking the task exists in the same zone and conning blue to you. So it is slightly below your level and should be relatively easy for you to kill. The system, however, doesn't adjust for other people doing stuff as well. So if somebody kills the monster after you have taken your quest and there aren't any others in the zone, then you might have to wait for the respawn. Also be advised that the compass direction that he tells you to go in isn't always entirely accurate. So going in a straight line to where he tells you isn't necessarily what he actually means. It's a little bit inaccurate, you're supposed to look for them yourself. However, the monsters generally are relatively close and if you can't find them, you can always look up the location of all the monsters in your realm on capenbree.net or on the Dark Age of Camelot hub on Alakazam. Links for both websites down in the description. This right here is the relevant part of Midgard that you're going to need to get from level 1 to 20. Vale of Malarn, East Svealand, Gotar, Mirkwood Forest, West Svealand and Muspelheim. Between West Svealand and Vale of Mularn lies the capital city of Midgard, Jordheim. Jordheim is really important for all sorts of things. It's where you can create guilds, it's where you can change your last name, it's where you have your bank, it's where you can craft and learn how to craft. It's even where you train and it's also where you pick up your epic quest at level 7. If you're a kobold seer or if you're a horrible hipster and for some reason made a dwarf rogue, you will start in Hagerfell. Hagerfell is one of the worst starting locations in Midgard, in my opinion, for several reasons actually. But the biggest problem is the kill tasking distance at level 3 and 4 is really, really far because you get the same exact monsters as the people who start in Mularn. So what you should do when you start in Hagerfell is you take the quest from Helen and the quest from the dwarf guard at the entrance, take a kill task from that dwarf guard by hitting your macro or typing slash whisper task, and then go out and kill a couple of blue monsters, kill your task target until you are one bubble away from level up, then go and turn your task into the dwarf guard to get to level 2, and then complete both the quests you receive by killing a hobgoblin snake finder and then killing a bear cub. That should generally give you the update for both of those quests. Make sure that you have both of them completed before you go back into town by hitting J or opening your journal and checking to see that both say return to whoever gave you this quest. Once you have both quests completed, head south and go toward Mularn and continue your journey there. Or just as I will recommend in a second for the Mularn players, head through Jordheim and go to Vazutheim in East Svealand, because this is in my opinion the best starting location. If you're beginning your journey as a dwarf viking or mystic, so that is dwarf rune masters and all of the vikings except for savage, then you will start in Mularn. Grab a kill task from Viking Krimhilde and then go out and kill a bunch of blues and your kill task target until you are one bubble away from level 2. Then go and turn in your task to get to level 2 and then go and kill a bunch of rattling skeletons right in front of town for some starter gear. Also don't forget to equip your shield because for some reason Vikings only get their shield at level 2. I don't know why this is but it is that way so make sure to equip it. Once you have grinded a bit of starting gear together on the rattling skeletons, or once you've gotten to level 3, either continue kill tasking until you get to level 5, or in my opinion the better choice, go through Jordheim to Vazutheim in East Svealand, because this is the best location for leveling 1 to 5. If you begin your adventure as a Norseman Viking, Mystic, Rogue or a Dwarf Seer, 
then you will start in Vazutheim. In my opinion, the best starting location in Midgard. Firstly, because it is close to Jordheim, and secondly, because it has two excellent low-level quests that will really help you along the way. So first you go to the bridge and pick up a kill task from Carl Gatt. And you do this by either hitting your macro or typing slash whisper task. Then go to the tiny island north of Vazutheim and kill wildlings until you have eight bubbles. You're doing this because the wildlings drop some really nice starting gear for you. Once you have your eight bubbles, go and take out your kill task target, which will bring you to nine bubbles. Then head back to Carl Gatt and turn in your kill task for level two. Take a new kill task right away and then go to the opposite side of Vazu time and talk to the troll standing next to the tree who will give you a really nice quest. This quest requires that you buy a bronze short sword from a merchant. So go to the forge and locate the sword merchant and buy a bronze short sword which costs you two silver. If you don't have the two silver yet from all the loot that you gathered and the kill task that you completed, then go out and do the new kill task you just got, maybe kill a few more monsters and that definitely should get you to two silver. As soon as you have your two silvers, go and buy the bronze short sword from the merchant and then hand it over to the troll by clicking on it in your inventory and dropping it on the troll. He will take it and then update your quest log and telling you to go and get a Swear Wolf Tooth. You can kill pretty much any Swear Wolf for this. It doesn't have to be a young Swear Wolf or a Swear Wolf, it can also just be a Swear Wolf Cub. And then with the tooth, go back to the troll, hand it in and he will give you a 100% quality sword. Because it's a sword, this of course doesn't do very much for the dwarf seers that start in Vazu time, and you should probably not do this quest because it's really just a waste of money for you as you can't sell the sword. So instead save your money and just buy a hammer from the hammer merchant. But for the classes that can use swords, this sword is absolutely fantastic and will practically double your damage output. So you should really do this quest as it will make your journey so much easier to level 5. After that, keep completing your kill tasks until you reach level 4, at which point there will be another quest a little bit further away from Vazu time from the Thrall Keeper, who will send you to kill three escaped Thralls, blue to level 4, and get their chains. Once you have the three chains, you run back to the Thrall Keeper, hand them to him, and you will get a pair of studded leather pants, which are also really, really good for any of the Viking classes. If you play a Seer or a Mystic, they're not quite as useful for you, but the quest still gives quite a lot of experience and is worth doing. And then just keep tasking and killing blues until you're level 5, at which point you run into your time to pick your advanced class and specialize in whatever you want to specialize in. If you start your journey in Midgard as a Cobalt Viking Mystic or Rogue, or a Valkyn Viking Mystic or Rogue, then you will start in Fort Atla in Northern Gotar. Sadly, Fort Atla does not have quite as good of a set of quests as Vazu time, but unless you feel like swimming all the way there, you're really just gonna have to deal with what you're given. First grab the quest from your trainer that you spawn right in front of. Then go into the northeastern house and talk to the lady until you have clicked on all of her quest triggers. And then proceed to the entrance of Fort Atla and grab a kill task from Troll Digby by selecting him and either clicking your kill task macro or typing slash whisper task. Then go straight out of the fort and kill five water snakes for the quest, three other random blue mobs so you have eight bubbles, and then the mob you need for your kill task. That should give you slightly over nine bubbles and then you head back to Troll Digby to turn in your task and ding level two. Immediately grab your next task for level two and go give the snake venom to Kari the healer. Go and complete kill tasks and kill blue monsters until you hit level 3 and then return to your trainer to pick up the next part of the quest, which is just to give the cure to the other lady in the northeastern house. This will just give you a little bit of experience and money, but at this level experience and money is really all you need. Then keep completing kill tasks and kill blue monsters until you hit level 5. For most of the classes that start in Fort Atla, there's also a trainer in Fort Atla, so you can just train right here. But if your trainer isn't in Fort Atla, you'll have to get up to Jordheim. So go and buy a ticket from the Stable Master to either Vazutheim or Mularn, whichever one they actually have, and then click the ticket in your inventory and drop it onto the Stable Master. That will put you on the horse. When you are on a horse route, do not hit Spacebar, because it will immediately dismount you from the horse and your five silver ticket will be gone. This doesn't matter that much later on, but in the beginning, five silver is a fortune and actually probably half the money you own, so be very, very careful with it. 
If you want to solo from level 5 on, you will also have to head up to Jordheim. If you begin your journey as a Norseman Seer or a Troll Viking or Seer, then you will start in the very, very far south lying city of Galplin in Mirkwood Forest. It's a rather unfortunate starting location because it is so far off from anything else that you're going to need at this low level, but you'll just have to deal with it. The first thing you want to do is grab the quest from your trainer and then head to in front of Galplin, where the two troll guards stand. Select one of them and either click your kill task macro or type slash whisper task to obtain your first kill task. Head to the left of the giant tusk gates and talk to Warl the Trapper. Then go and kill five tawny lynx cubs for the quest, another three blue con monsters to get to eight bubbles, and then the target for your first kill task. That should get you to just over nine bubbles, at which point you head back to the troll that gave you your task and you turn it in. Which will bring you to level two. Immediately pick up the next kill task, go turn the quest into Warl, and then get to level 3 by killing as many Rattling Skeletons as you can find. Rattling Skeletons will drop some really nice starting gear for you, so it's a good idea to kill as many of them as possible while they are blue. After you've equipped yourself or you've hit 8 bubbles on level 2, go and kill your kill task target and then turn that into Ding level 3. From then on just do kill tasks and kill blue con monsters until you hit level 5. Most of the classes that start here also have trainers here, but some don't. If your class doesn't have a trainer in Gulplin, you will have to ride north to train. Most of the other trainers are in Fort Atla, but I would definitely advise you to just immediately ride straight through to Jordheim. Which means you want to get to Outlitten, Vazutheim, Mularn or Hagerfell because they're the closest towns to Jordheim. You can ride up north by going to the Stable Master and buying a ticket from them. Then you click on the ticket and drop the ticket on the Stable Master. This will put you on a horse. Once you're on a horse, do not push the spacebar or whatever your jump key is because it will make you jump off the horse and the horse will be gone and so will your ticket. There are no refunds, you're going to lose 5 silver. That doesn't matter much later, but in the beginning that's actually quite a fortune and most likely about half of the money you even have. Then run the rest of the way to Jordheim, go in, pick your class, train in your specializations and certainly make sure to bind in one of the towns up here because you do not want to spawn back in Galplin when you die. If you plan on leveling by yourself, you definitely want to go up to Jordheim anyway because your journey will start in Mularn. If you decide to solo level from 5 to 20, you will continue to kill task, which you are already familiar with. Kill tasking definitely is the best thing to do for leveling. It might not be quite as good as directly just farming monsters over and over with some of the classes, but it also provides you quite a bit of money, which can certainly be important because, well, you kind of need a little bit of money to get ahead. You don't have to task all the way from level 5 to 20, but when you can do tasks, you should, and after level 20 there are no more kill tasks. So make use of them while they are there, especially the last couple of levels before 20 you should try to kill task because they give quite a lot of silvers individually. With level 5 you want to kill task in Mularn. It's not pretty, but it is certainly the best kill tasking you will do. The stuff you need to kill is still pretty close to you, some of it is close up to Hagerfell, but most of it is around Mularn. As soon as you hit level 6 you want to go to the second guard tower west of Mularn, and there you can beautifully task from level 6 to 9, because pretty much everything you need to kill is right there next to you. You start out with Huldus and Spiders and then Hill People and Grendel Orms and Small Hill Cats, and it's really all right next to that tower. It's a beautiful area to kill task. At level 9 you will have to ride down south, but that shouldn't be a big problem anymore. At this point you should have quite a bit of money in your pocket. And you want to get to the guard tower that's close to Nulleton in the zone of Gotar. It's right next to the bridge that leads south to Mirkwood Forest. This area is also not too bad for tasking, most of it is really just across the road or just behind the turret, although if you get a Nakken, those can be a little bit annoying, as they are in the lake in the southwest corner of the zone. From level 10 to 13, the perfect tasking location is the North Mirkwood Tower. It is a great location as Drakelings and Wisps and all this other stuff are just over the hill south of it and you can complete your kill tasks really quickly. If you're incredibly unlucky, you might also sometimes get Svatalf Outcasts, which are on the tiny little island south of Galplin. That is a little bit of a track and it's annoying when it happens, but the speed of the other kill tasks really does make up for it. 
And then from level 13 to 20, all of your tasking should take place at the Gna Faced Tower. The tower is right next to Gna Faced, which is really just a house in the middle of the woods. But because of its location and the NPCs that stand there, it is quite the Midgardian hub. That tower will easily let you task level 30 to 20, and there is also a lot of people leveling there in groups, so if you're interested in that, you might even just stumble over some other people while doing your tasks. If while tasking your gear is starting to get grey, which is certainly going to happen at some point, you might want to stock up on some new equipment, both weapons and armor. And you can either do that of course at the merchant, where it is really expensive and not actually that great quality, or you can venture into Nissus Lair from about level 12 to 17 and kill a bunch of the blue and yellow Contumptus in there, who drop all sorts of armors and weapons for that level. Once you hit level 20 and all the way up to level 25, you can solo your way through the Cursed Tomb, in which you can also get a lot of different sets of armor, weapons and pretty much everything else you might want. At level 20, kill tasks stop, so from here on out you will have to just grind blue or yellow monsters, whatever you can handle, or if you're not entirely adverse to the idea, go and find a group instead. Group leveling in Dark Age of Camelot is certainly the best way to level up throughout the levels. Even from level 5 to 20, you can absolutely make quite a bit more experience from grouping than you could by just kill tasking by yourself. Now admittedly not all classes in this game are good at soloing, some are really good at it and others are hopeless at it, like most of the healers for example, and for them it is pretty much necessary to find a leveling group of course. Once you build your group at level 5, the best place to start out is either the Tomte Camps, southwest of Vazutheim, or the Dirges and Thralls, southeast of Outleaton. Point of notice, the dirges only spawn at night, so if it's during the day, you'll have to kill thralls or wait for it to become night so you can actually kill the dirges. If you have a smaller or weaker group setup, then you probably don't want to attempt the Tomtis because their camp is quite hard and there are quite a few high level names in there that can absolutely ruin your fun. Once you get to level 6, however, you really want to go down south and kill the Draklings, because that is an absurdly good spot to just roam through with a group of people and just destroy all the little lizards. With a good group, you can easily level from 5 to 8 in this area in an hour or less. At level 8, you have to start legging it, because there really is nothing left for you in East Svealand, and you want to go down to Gotar near Nullitten, where you can find the perfidious Pooks sitting around on an islet. The pooks are aggro, but they don't group, so if you pull them carefully, you can get them one at a time, if that is even necessary for your group. With level 10, you have two options. Either you go down to Mirkwood Forest, or you go to your first dungeon. We'll get to the dungeons later. I call it stuff around Gna because it's really nothing specific. There are spiders and wargs and undead trolls and tiny werewolves and all sorts of other stuff that you can just kill with a really good group. You just sit right behind the house and start pulling stuff and you'll be gaining lots of experience. You can do this up to level 13, but at level 12 I would personally go to the Tinglers, which are tiny little spiders, and they're good till about level 14. At 13, however, with a good group, you can start going to the Great Tinglers and Arachides. These come in groups when pulled, but if you have a crowd controller, that only makes the experience all the juicier. At level 16 to 18, you can start killing the werewolves in Askheim, but definitely be careful there, because the levels range from 16 all the way up to 20. If Mirkwood Forest is too filled with people, which sometimes, especially on the weekends, can be the case, and you want a more quiet spot for your group that has a lot of camp bonus, you might want to go to West Svealand and kill the Blodfelag, either at their camps in the south when you're 12 to 14, or if you are level 14 to 18, you can go up to the Blodfelag fortress. However, be very, very careful at the fortress because it is full of the Blodfelag Haxa, which are horrible caster mobs with really nasty poisons. So definitely make sure you have some good CC in a tank to attempt this spawn. If you're not interested in going into a dungeon, from level 17 to 20 you can also kill the Soot Harvesters in Muspelheim. Although toward level 20 you'll have a bunch of yellows already, which means you might want to go a bit further north and start killing some of the ants and such that are also in Muspelheim. Muspelheim in general is a great area for level 20+, plus, so this beautiful land of fire and brimstone might very well become your home for a while. Alternatively, you also have the choices of two dungeons. You can go to Nissus Lair from level 10 all the way up to level 15 because the level range in Nissus Lair is quite wide. 
And from level 17 to 20, you can make your home in Cursed Tomb. If you have a really strong 8-man melee group with all the bells and whistles, you can even go there at level 16. Cursed Tomb is a particular favorite of mine because there are a lot of neutral monsters in there that make it really, really easy to pull without a lot of danger. And you can get good items for pretty much any class that you might have in your group. Alright, that is literally everything you need for leveling from 5 to 20 in Midgard. If you enjoyed this guide, please consider giving it a like and also consider subscribing to my channel where I do all sorts of content around Camelot Unchained or naughtier games such as Dark Age of Camelot and Warhammer Online. If you're looking for any of the other guides, do look up in the card section in the top right or check the description for links to them, because whatever you might want for Classic Dog, I have a guide for it. Or at least once they're all uploaded. Or if you're watching this right after I upload it, there's probably not all that many of them yet because I'm still making them, but they should be here shortly. But until then, I've been the Cloaking Donkey and I will see you in another video.